Have you ever had a hard time motivating yourself to do something, including taking care of yourself? I've had many times in my life when I'm like, ah, I don't want to do this, although I know how important it is. And for many of us, after living several decades, we get into a process of how to actually motivate ourselves. But sometimes the seasons we're in, we're really busy. And sometimes we also want to start new projects. And when that happens, including the project of taking care of ourselves and renewing without burning out, can feel like one more thing on our to-do list. And then we, we start Googling how to motivate myself. And interestingly, you might have heard of motivation, but motivation is not really what we think it is or how it is popularized on the internet. So I'm going to share with you three secrets about motivation and how to motivate yourself today. And you might know me or not, I'm Dr. Ioana Popa from Team for the Soul. And I love this combination, this sacred space between science, psychology, ancient Christian faith, and interfaith chaplaincy, spiritual care. And I invite you to really listen to this short presentation and the renewal nugget on Oasis in the Midst of Action, how to really regenerate and renew on the go. And getting motivated is part of it. If we can imagine yourself, can get motivated not only around self-care, but anything else we need to do, we'll feel less drag, less to pull down on a daily basis so we can feel more energized and full of peace and joy so that you can help others and make this world a better place. have heard about motivation. It's very popular in psychology. I used to teach AP, which is advanced placement psychology in high school and also in college. And motivation is a big thing in research and there's lots of things written about it. But I feel like as a physician, there's something that we're missing here. And I'm going to tell you my difficulties with the way we're interpreting motivation nowadays, because motivation sounds really simple. And when we read it, we read something inspiring, we all of a sudden feel energized and we're like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then we do it for a while, a few days, maybe lucky if you do it for, if you're anything like me, if I'm lucky to do it for a week. And then I get like tired and then I have maybe an interest. And before I know it, I'm going to start getting into my headspace and think, should I do it? Should I not do it? And then I'm going to push on to then my striver, this part of me that's like, I'm going to persevere. And with that, we get into this up and down, up and down like a yo-yo, which on a biological level really has to do with dopamine. You might have heard about this, but I like to call this dynamic around motivation hopping on our dopamine horse. What do I mean by that? If we think of motivation only doing things when we're energized, then that energy, when we read something inspiring or we hear something on YouTube or on a particular show, we get so inspired, that brings a rush. At the bottom of it, it's some neurotransmitter and chemical in our brain, the dopamine, we get really excited. But what happens is after this rush of energy, we're only human beings, we're imperfect, we are a system, too much energy can lead to lower energy afterwards. And then this is where we can get tired. So we get tired and then we start in getting into our stories, into our head or conditionings. Who knows? Maybe you might even have memories from school when you were supposed to do something. So all of a sudden, something that was really coming from inside of you as something important and dear to you becomes something external as if someone else is imposing this and then we don't do it. And then when we don't do it, we might start feeling self-critical, then doubting. So we get into all those polarities from different parts inside of us. And then we are not taking the next step, which is to get into action. 
So I'm going to challenge that today. And I know this might feel like I'm flipping things upside down, but actually more to be motivated. We don't need that high energy. We don't need that dopamine horse, so to speak, because we can access our will even when we don't feel like it. And I'll give you some examples. If it's hard to believe, just think about it. How many times do you have to will yourself into brushing your teeth? I mean, maybe you're still sometimes feeling like not doing it, but after years and decades of that and many cavities, right? Eventually we come to a point where we just do it automatically. Once we made the decision, I'm gonna brush my teeth, we don't think about it. And if this is not the best example for you, think about driving your car. Like, do you have to feel like driving your car to do it? No. Or do you have to feel like dressing in the morning? No. Now, again, some areas might be more difficult for us. Some people do actually have more difficulties thinking about what to wear in the day. So just pick an example in your life when you do it with ease. Maybe preparing for your food is not a big deal for you, or eating is not a big deal for you, or just walking, it's not a big deal for you. Whatever that activity is, just lean into that right now and just realize you just do it day in and day out, no matter what. And this is the key, no matter what. So we don't want to equate motivation with our emotions and feeling really good about it because we're not going to always feel good about it. But there's a sense of detachment. Once we're clear that we're just going to do it and we have enough of the habit and the routine to do it, We don't think about it. We don't think about it. We don't get into stories. Our emotions are not entangled. It just happens. And if this is you, just type in the chat. You're not alone. I've been there, done that. Now, this leads us into the secret number two. This idea that once we are clear on what to do, the action is very easy to initiate. And I'm going to give you an example. Right now, just listening to me, I say, oh, let's just touch our right ear or another part of your of your body right i just touch it my right ear because i took away the emotions is there's a detachment from it what in spiritual traditions sometimes they call this detachment or dispassion so it's okay to have an emotion around any habit that we want to create or any action we need to create including our self-care but if that's the case instead of deliberating about it all the time, it's best to actually sit down separately, trying to deal with your emotions or conflicting emotions that you might have by either talking with a friend or a mentor or a coach or a counselor, your doctor. Once those conflicting emotions are put to rest and you made a decision, okay, I'm going to do it. We do not need emotions. We do not need any high energy. It's as simple as, okay, right now, I'm just going to do it. Like, I'm going to touch my left ear right now, right? Just like that. I know it sounds easy and a little bit twisted, but if we pause and think, we only have action and will and choice in the present moment not in the past. We cannot change it. So much of our lives, we go over our past and rehash it and rehash it. It's awesome to revisit the past, to learn new strategies and move forward. But once we've learned our lessons, we don't want to spend all much and so much energy in the past because we cannot change the past. The same for the future. It's nice to have plans. But when we see ourselves daydreaming and daydreaming and keep thinking about our future, we actually cannot implement and do anything in the future. It's only in the now. And it takes a little practice and just a simple realization that only right now I can move my body. And what a miracle this is. I said, I'm going to touch my nose right now. Here it is. I touch my nose. So with that, when we remove the emotions, I'm not suggesting suppressing right here. I do, as I mentioned earlier, talk with someone about your feelings. And once you resolve them and you're clear that this is something that you want to do, starting an action in the present moment can be as simple as standing up or touching your nose. All right. Secret number three. 
that's really talk about, although I see now more and more on social media, I've seen now more and more in even in psychological work, it's easier and better to start with small steps and go slow every day, so small that you cannot fail. Now, most people know now that it takes about 21 days or a month to create habits. I will say, yes, creating a habit, it takes that much, but to really make this ingrained, we will need to continue and further this for several months. And the best way to do it without overburdening us, without us getting tired, is to do very small steps, continue with them. Most of us, we have a part of us that keeps track of how we're doing. Am I doing what I'm saying? And then when we don't, we get into self-criticism and doubting. So it's good to do the small steps. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples. I had a season in my life where I stopped exercising. And when I restarted, as I had this insight, I start I, because I've tried it and I fail. I, I've tried many of things online and just didn't work. You know, how to motivate myself, how to stay on track. It's just like didn't work for me. But what I did is I said, well, I can not exercise if I just say 10 minutes a day. Like all the arguments that would go around, oh, I'm too busy. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I'm tired none of them can hold to this idea, well, 10 minutes, all I need to do is maybe just walk if I'm tired. But 10 minutes, I cannot say no to 10 minutes. And what I did that was really interesting that turned my life around, and I've been doing this for more than a decade, is I refrain myself to do more than 10 minutes for a while. And this might sound, again, counterintuitive. I might be twisting your brain right now, but let's think about it. If I'm really at the gym and I'm really energized and I want to stay, I want to do more, I want to do more, I have so much energy and I do 40, 50 minutes, guess what's going to happen next day? I'm going to feel tired in my brain somewhere in the back. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't have time for 40, 50 minutes to, to replicate the previous experience. Now, reverse that and think I'm at a gym and I'm really energized, but I really keep track and I have a timer and after 10 minutes, okay, I'm done. Parts of me will be like, I want more. Well, guess what? Hold that desire, hold that energy, and it's going to ride your way for the next day. And then I did that 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes consistently. And after a while, okay, once in a while, I can celebrate and stay longer. Maybe I have a, a day just like that. But in general, I st stuck with 10 minutes a day until I created a habit, not just for a month, but for several months. And then in time, when I didn't, I actually missed it. So it became easier for me to go and exercise. Now, you might be saying, okay, this is fine with exercising. This is fine maybe with smaller things. But what if I have a really big project that I have to do? Well, I got you covered. So one of the things that you can do is to, when you have a big project, your first time when you put on your planner, oh, I have to work on this project, don't actually work on the project, but just sit with it. Think about it and kind of plan it. Just write the steps. Just maybe dream about it. So just to kind of get yourself around what is that entailing for you. And then maybe the next time on your calendar, you would say, well, maybe right now I'm just going to write the three or five main big steps. And that's it. Once you've done that, you've accomplished check on your to-do list. Then the next step you say, okay, for each of those three to five big steps, I'm going to write what are the smaller steps that maybe need to be done on a week by week basis. Of course, it depends on how quickly the project needs to be accomplished. And then you really have a chance to fill it out and then decide, okay, which month you're going to do which project, which week you're going to do it, and then decide day by day. Now, obviously, this might not work if you're, this is for a work project. Obviously, this is where you might work as a team. You might, you might already get trained on the spot and, and through your job. So I'm talking about other things that you like to do in life where you feel like between your work, your family, and everything else that's going on in your life, you're like, I don't know how to do this, especially renewal. So small steps, so small that you cannot fail.
type in the chat what kind of questions and if this resonates with you, if you try some of those strategies and let's share in our collective wisdom. All right, so in summary, the three things that we want to consider is number one, will is not this high energy as motivation. It's actually a process and a action that we're committed to even we, we don't feel like it. We don't want to get just energized and then really feel really low about it. So don't seek that dopamine high, the dopamine horse, so to speak, because before you know it, the horse is going to get tired. You're going to get tired and it's going to be hard to sustain it. High level of energy and can lead to burnout. Secret number two separate the emotional reaction and emotional regulation from your decision. So if you find yourself getting into lots of story, lots of emotions around that, deal with them separately. Talk with a friend, a mentor, counselor, therapist, doctor, to really deal with the emotions. Many times they're, they're conditioned and triggered, they're triggers from the past. Once we deal with them, we realize that this is our decision and we have clarity on an energetic level then we can move forward. And number three, start small, go slow, and take those small steps every day so small that you cannot fail. I cannot stress how important this is, especially for very busy givers like you, that you're pulled in so many directions. In order to progress, it's better to do small things every day, get into the habit of them, make them easy and flowy in such a way that you look forward to and pick activities that are easy for you and that you cannot fail so we don't get into the negative self-criticism and doubting and shame and all that. So with that, if you have any more thoughts, want to type in the chat, I would love to hear from you. And I will leave you and thank you for this being in this shared space. I don't take your time lightly. I know how busy you are. So the fact that you're listening to this means a lot to me and it makes me motivated to continue to show up. So until next time, I say goodbye for now.